Hey, welcome back to the NAWL podcast. Today should be a good one. We got Tyler Durham and Melvin on the show, so it should be a good one. Today we're going to be talking about the playoffs, all the World Series matchups, a player being suspended, and future rule changes coming to the league. All right, so the playoffs are now set. We got the four teams in the playoffs. Two, two teams that are eliminated are probably the ones we expected. Yep. We got the Hogs and the Dodos. Two expansion teams didn't quite make it. Yeah. Dodos are looking out for next year, though, I will say. Dodos are looking a lot better with their new signee, Tate Barrier. He should have hit five home runs. A couple of them got robbed, but still looking very bright future for the Dodos. Who do you think is the future World Series champs this year? Now, i got to say Melons, obviously. Back-to-back. Yeah. I, mean, I think it's Slinger's year this year. Well, I think the Bombers are looking good. They got some new signees, and we're going to win. Who do you really I think, mean, though? the Bombers are going to Maybe a little biased year. here, but... I think the Bombers, no bias in it. Yeah, sure. What, Derek? I, th- I think the Melons as well. Because they're good. <laughs> Bad. And every player said they're in the team. And are there any surprises in the seating that y'all think the seating would work out this way? Uh, um, well, likely to be high. Pretty much what I thought it would be for the Melons. So I thought we'd get the one seed, but I'll have the Bombers. I would say after after our first series when we got swept, I would expect the two seed at the Melons, <laughs> and that's exactly what we got. We are now playing the Bombers. First round. A very two, favorable first three seed. Matchup. I would say the the line is probably going the Melons way quite a bit, quite a bit here in this game. Yeah. Just based on yeah. how both teams have been playing as of late. The one thing I expected more was the Bombers to be the one seed, just because yeah, we we were the first seed through the whole most regular season, but at the end we kind of fell off a little bit. But we're gonna win it. The Bombers are gonna win. Yeah, I want to get that far with it. I, I feel like the Slogger Slingers matchup has become more interesting yeah, with the uh, second matchup. best player yeah, of the uh, Sloggers getting suspended. Yeah, well, I feel like we've been playing good, but we haven't been like, the ball hasn't been bouncing our way a little bit, you know? Because, like, Slingers. yeah, because, like, I feel like we're just not getting that clutch hits we need. I mean, we're not playing bad, but I feel like we can lock it in against the Sluggers and do good. Because they're, like, they're, they're a cocky team. Like, yeah. They've been talking a lot about how to... What's their game what do you think it'll take to make your first World Series ever? Just good pitching, and then I thought, well, Luke is known to throw, like, pretty hard, so if we bring our radar gun, then we should, like, he should maybe get some violations or slow it down. Then we can hit off him. Because his pitches don't move that much. I mean, his drop does, but, like, his slider and rocker are, like, pretty meaty. Yeah. So, uh, what are y'all's predictions for the slingers Sluggers matchup, everybody? Uh, I'll start. Yeah. I think uh, Sluggers 2-1. Well, I think if the Slingers can find the guy that gets comfortable, comfortable on the mound, they're going to take it. But if they can't find it, I think the Sluggers will win because Luke Freeman is always good. Sluggers always find their way in the World yeah, Series, it seems always, like. Yeah. Except for last year, but I don't know. They just seem to win a lot. Just win series. I think we can upset them. we got like an underdog mindset this series. I've been talking to my team a little bit about that. Because usually we're like a, kind of like a top dog in the league, but this year we've kind of been like – we have, a, we have a losing record, seven and eight. But if I can lock it in on the mound, then I feel like we should be good. Because it's hard to be the same team twice, especially in a row. You've seen that with like a lot of other sports. So like, I feel like we have a good shot at making it to the World Series this year. I also feel like if the Slingers find the third guy to get yeah. some timely hits. Very good. Cord Pig. Yeah. Like, Cord Pig has been stepping it up this year a lot for the third spot. So who's starting game one for y'all? Well, uh, we don't really know yet, but I would say. Try to start me because like Carter's more prone to home runs, but he's using it pretty consistent, like kind of zone. But usually, if I like pitch, then it's, if I'm if I'm on, it's like really good. But sometimes like some, I've been struggling a little bit, especially earlier in the year. I couldn't really hit the zone that much, but now I'm trying to dial it in. Like against the Sluggers that last series, mm-hmm. I was dialing it in, especially game two before that little idiot broke the ball. And then last year, even though we lost in the um, Semifinals last year, I was doing pitching pretty good. We just couldn't get the bats going, really. Yeah, all right. My prediction is I think the Slingers will win 2-1 to one because I do think – or I think they'll actually win 2-0. to zero. It seems like most of these playoff matches always end in a 2-0 sweep just because, I don't know, the better team that day will win both games. I think Luke Freeman, if we bring the radar gun, will get some speed warning, speed violations a lot. And I think he'll have to slow it down, which will – affect him so i got slingers two zero i also feel like the mental battle for the sluggers is gonna have a big toll on them with not with not without having their best hitter yeah that's they're gonna it. have to find some other players to really step up yeah and come mm-hmm. 
I mean, you see Grant. Grant. He has a few timely hits, like get the dodo to that walk off homer. But he's been struggling to play, especially. He did struggle against the slingers, I will say. Yeah, you can see in the video, we were like mowing him down. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, Luke is like a really good player. He's like all around two way player. Kirkland, he's kind of new to the league, but I think, I mean, he's, I think a, he's, solid, he's a solid baseball one. player, and he's like, he got some power on him. Yeah. What about the Melons Bombers? Yeah, that's Melons it. Melons Bombers predictions? Oh, I mean, again. Melons 2 0, second game's close, but Melons 2 0. Well, personally. <laughs> Bombers player right here. I so. think the yeah. Bombers will take it 2-1 just because we have three new signees that all play baseball. They're really good. And Bo Hargett's been practicing on the mound. He flashed some good pitches against the Melons, but they hit him pretty good last time. But he's going to be better, and we're going to hit Hanks. Mm -hmm. And last time William Mann pitched, it was not good. Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's a big yeah, that is serious. If, if William's if William's on, I feel like the Melons will win pretty handedly. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the Bombers have got some new players. They don't. I don't know if they have much football experience, but they're good baseball players. And yeah. so I feel like they could like maybe after like game one, or, but it's probably a little time to adjust to like just, like the movement yeah. and stuff. So I don't know if it's the best time to be playing like, in the playoffs, but so I think I got I got the Melons winning uh, two zero. But I feel like. At least one game will be pretty close. Yeah. Yeah, I also like, got Melons winning 2 0. Uh, Bombers pretty much have a whole new team coming into this series, which is kind of odd going into the playoffs with a whole different team. Chemistry will not be there for them. And obviously, the Melons just, they just win, as you can see. Well, I think the Bombers will win. Yeah. It's because we'll make the World Series every single year. And I do have chemistry with these guys because I play yeah, baseball with them all the time. Yeah, I play with football though. Yeah, with football uh, chemistry is different than baseball chemistry. Yeah. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to potential World Series matchups this year. Yep. All right, I'll go first. So I did say the Slingers will beat the Sluggers and the Melons will beat the Bombers. So it's Slingers Melons World Series. Pretty classic matchup. Uh, dates back a couple seasons now. And they always have pretty intense matchups, I'd say. Me being a part of it. Uh, I think the, if I can think, I'm pretty sure the all time series is six to five Melons. As of Melons having the lead late, Slingers would dominate back in the first season they played. Melons now starting to dominate the second season. So it's pretty even coming up to the World Series. It'll be their first World Series matchup. I obviously have Melons winning that. I'm going to say it's a five game series. So I'm going to say three one. We win four games. So I picked Slingers versus Melons, same as my brother William. So she, I should say it'd be an intense matchup. I like the playoffs last year was intense. Both those games were close. We just couldn't pull it out. So I feel like we'll come out with some revenge this year. I feel like we'll win, but I feel like it'll be a close one. It's like William he throws strikes, but it's a point as long as we can hit it. And if I'm if I'm on, it should be good because we play it in a span of two days. So. Uh, if I'm on game, we'll play three games game one. So if I'm on, I'll get to play three. It's not like all spread out. Even though the videos are spread out, it's all put, it's all within the span of two days. Yeah. All right. Well, I think the Bombers, of course, are going to make it. But Sluggers and Slingers, I think I picked the Sluggers earlier. So Bombers, Sluggers, in the regular season, we beat them. And we beat them last season in the playoffs. And we lost the World Series to them a couple, years ago, or a couple seasons ago. But I think we can take the win just because Lou Freeman is a pretty predictable pitcher. Um, he throws sliders and risers to all the people that he thinks can't hit. But to me, he tries to throw drops and screws. And yeah, I will say about Lou stuff. Freeman, he's probably one of, the, he's one of the best pitchers in the league. But for me, it's like more easy to hit off him because I know he's going to throw a strike. So I know I can swing at it every time pretty much. And uh, that's... What I think about Luke. Yeah. And then, in, the, in the past, I've really hit him pretty good. And I think our new signees are really good at hitting baseball. So I'll transfer over and pitching for us. I know Bo's going to pound the zone, but I just don't know how they're going to hit off him with Cody Willis uh, not being in the series. I had no one sluggers. I feel like that would be probably the most hyped up matchup, the most high intensity matchup we'd have just because of uh, unforeseen things. Um, after the videos and stuff. And uh, I think we'd win 3-1. I 
I think Luke's a really good pitcher and be hard to win three games in a row off of. But I, without him, I don't know how good their offense really is. So. Yeah, Luke really attacks his own. It's really his way of pitching. He's like always throw a first pitch strike, even second pitch strike. Get, mm-hmm. Gets a hitter down. Because when you're down in the count, you like have to swing and protect the plate. So he'll, hit. Oh. Like he'll start off with a nice rider in the zone. Like he can throw a strike. Like his command is like so good. I mean, some of his movements pretty good, like his drop and his like two seam. But like his slider and riser are pretty straight, but they just attack his zone. So you got to be ready to swing. But you also don't want to chase those out when you're down. I don't want to or want to. He's also been bringing out some curve balls and slurs and stuff. So mm-hmm. yeah, he's bringing out some new pitches. See more of that. Especially when he know. gets up in the count, he'll pull out a odd, weird pitch to throw off the batter, and it it, it works a lot. All right, moving on to the suspension of mm-hmm. Cody Willis from the Sluggers. Edward, we'll let you start. It's a hot topic in this league. So if y'all know the full story. You can see, I started pitching. I was dialing it in. I was like striking all out. I was having a good day on the mound. It was a zero zero game, I think. In extra, it started, it yeah. was like top of the fourth, I think. Extra innings. Yeah, me and Luke were just having a pitching deal back and forth, back and forth. Just like strike out after strike out. Like intense matchup. And then, so Cody Willis, after I finished my inning pitching, scoreless inning. And then, so Cody, like the ball, like, so me and Luke used a different ball. So, I mean, it's the same like brand and everything. It's just like one like better. So Cody, like, he got my ball, and then I didn't realize he had it. He, he was hiding it behind his back, and then he got it. He, he, ripped, he, he like, took it in the field. Ripped, yeah, he took it in the field. He, like, ripped it in half, so I couldn't pitch it for the rest of the time. So that made me mad because I was pitching great. And, like, the ball's, like, a lot different because, like, the scuffing dynamics is different for each ball and stuff. So, like, Luke's ball is still intact and everything, but I guess he was mad I was pitching good, so he, like, didn't want that to happen. So we made – me and William yeah, so, made but, yeah, the, the – uh, so they weren't playing that day, so we were like the umps, I guess. So I made the decision that they had to forfeit that game, that set game two. Yeah. So Slingers got the win on that game, and then we continued with game three after that. And then we came to the decision after game three was over that uh, Cody Willis needed to uh, face further consequences, so he suspended the whole playoffs. I think a big reason for that is if Edward had kept pitching like that and they won the next two games – it really would have changed the the seeding for the yeah. playoffs, and they would play yes. the Slingers would have played the Bombers, and the Sluggers would have played the Melons, who was arguably a harder team just because of seeding. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, so the, the Sluggers really fight for that one seed, and if they wanted to um, beat us in the series, they would have gotten the two seed instead of the one seed. So I think Cody was just like rolling into that one seed, so he was like did some cheating to get. Because mm-hmm. well, they already won game one, they won like game one fair and square. And then, so I guess it's kind of because if you only get suspended, if you only forfeit one game and your pitcher doesn't have the ball, then like they still win the series. They still win the series because they won game three, so then they win the series two one. So like you can't just like do that. And our, I don't know. This was my kind of main reasoning for uh, like suspending him the whole playoffs is because you know you don't want to have someone do that in the future and not like and know what the consequences are beforehand. Because yeah. there's no way he does anything like that again. Yeah. Yeah, because he's, I mean, he's really mad he's suspended. He's begging for not a suspension or maybe just one series suspension. But we can't give in to that because then the consequences aren't good enough and he could possibly do it again. Yeah, because yeah, if it's just like suspended for one game or something, then and he, he can like... It might be worth it. He might sacrifice, again. especially if you're not that best of a player. Like, let's say Durant, he's not that good of a player on their team. He's not one of those, he, Luke could just tell him, Hey, go mess up his ball. I don't, I don't really care if you get suspended for the series. And then he does it, and then they win the series. And yeah. Nothing really happens to their team, just their player. Mm-hmm. So you need to make it where like, it's like a like big consequence. Yeah. And it was big news for the league. Uh, I think that night in the group, man, probably had about 180 messages about <laughs> pretty much just Cody Lewis arguing about not getting suspended, get suspended, but just yeah. can't give in to that and they yeah, suspend him. There's a lot of people right. on other teams arguing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the whole different sides. Arguing, yeah. yeah, but you gotta I mean you gotta let the league leaders make the call. You can't just like if you're like a player vote, like Yeah, a player on a on the the leaders two teams. To yeah. 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 Now we're moving on to some future rule changes and the, just like the overall future of the league. So the main rule change we're gonna make is the ball. A lot of balls were in out of hand with the cheese grading and uh, my other ways of scuffing, but we're moving on to MLW style just uh, concrete scuffs uh, balls, so yeah. the league is even. Yeah, yeah we were we were originally you just used MLW style 
concrete scuff balls always. We so both pitchers could use the same ball. It wouldn't matter. You wouldn't have to whatever like find your ball ever really. But then I think some players just found out you could cheese grade them, and we didn't really know that would get out of hand or whatever. So we're like, oh, cheese grader makes them move more. Uh, yeah, like the pitches well, look nastier. People just, will like this, you know. Yeah, let's just all use these or whatever. Start using them. They're more uh, less durable. They break easier, and then they're you can't hit them as far, can't throw them as far because they're just softer, they're like flimsy, and flimsy. Yeah. So next season we're definitely going back to original concrete MOW style wiffle balls. Yeah. So before the series, I'll just like get a new ball and scuff it up on the concrete, and then I'll just bring it for both pitchers to use. So we just use the same ball, and then so like you, you can't bring your own ball to like I know like Luke brings a few of his balls every to every series and because he likes those like the cheap grade ones. But next year I'm just gonna make everyone use the same ball, so like you can't like do anything to it because it'll mess up your own team also. Yeah, there'll be more plays in the field, more home runs, and uh, less walks because these balls are more accurate once you learn how to throw them. So overall, it's gonna be a lot better for the league. Another rule change is we're gonna up the speed limit. We're really gonna start using the radar gun that we have, and it's gonna cause more intense games that don't just go on forever with walks and just more strikes and more outs and closer games. Yeah, so like, I mean, you see some games like Slayers for Slayers last video was posted, like it was zero zero. Like those games are like, I feel like those games are fun to watch. They're like really intense. It's not just like walk after home run after hit. Like everything's just a rally. Like every, all the games like double digit scoring, like 12 to 10 or something like that. So they like more extra innings, you know, because it's like zero zero, one zero. It's like, and like a home run is really crucial. It's like it's not just like if you have, if you do a solo shot right now, it's like you, it's not hard to come back from that at all. Like it's like, yeah. but then if you like a solo, solo or like two run shot, it's like pretty like like yeah. Also, kind of like MLW games. Also, I'd like to say that like pretty much what he just said, but like if you get if you get six runs in an inning, that should pretty much like solidify the game. Like mm -hmm. think about like. MLB, for instance, if you're up six to zero, you're per, you pretty much won the game already. Like the other teams are just gonna quit. I mean, almost quitting really, mentally and like. But right now, if you get six runs, like the other team gets six runs just like that, and it's already a game again, and just like over and over. Like if you hit three home runs in a row, like it, it doesn't matter that much. It should though. Okay, a good example of that was last year, Melons versus Sluggers. William hit like six home runs and Durham hit like four or something, and then he got swept. Mm -hmm. That just shows that like runs, like I mean, they're crucial, but like you, it's easy to get like come back from stuff. Yeah, and like mean, it's like a big rally. Like if you if you, if you lead the bases up and like just like walk, like, a lot of people struggle with walks, and it's like I mean, if you get a lot of runs, then like it doesn't mean that much. Yeah, yeah I mean, most anybody can just go up there and put the ball in play and get safe. And I think another thing, these balls are in a Bring the leagues more fielding because the other balls are really like uh, inconsistent bounces and yeah. you know, more be more plays and more action. So. I think it'll uh, widen the skill gap too because like anybody, if you have no wiffle ball or baseball experience, a lot of them can come out and just hit little dribblers, always singles, mm -hmm. you know. But new balls, higher speed limit, not gonna be able to hit as much. But even if with a little dribbler, there's a lot more chance that they're at first. So. And be a lot better. the movement is still like pretty drastic. Like it's not just like, it's not, like straight balls or anything. Like I mean, you see like s still some videos like in one they have crazy movement. And there's there's these concrete ball. Yeah. Which, well, we call it concrete ball because it's like scuffed on concrete. That's what we call it. It's like yeah. concrete ball. Yeah. yeah, I think next season the videos will be a lot more entertaining to watch with all the plays and home runs and. Lower scoring. Yeah, more intense. Like you see MLW games. Well, like MLW scoring. Yeah. There's so. a lot of there's a lot of blowouts. You just if one pitcher's on, and the other one's not. It's just a lopsided game. Yeah, like stuff. a walk fest and like other stuff. Yeah. So is that it for the possible rule changes? Yeah, uh, I, I think we got some more rules though. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, we probably do. That might be in the works. Yeah. More rules in the workings. Like, if you're signing somebody, you have to put it to the commissioner first. You can't just like bring someone to the field and like. Play with them. them, yeah, mm -hmm. and so it's gonna be like more like organized and that like Department. sort of thing. Yeah. Should we say something? About and that? once, once we get to the summer, we're really gonna. Yeah, in the summer, cause like everyone's gonna be able right to now. Play. We're like we have like school. I mean, luckily all of our sports have ended, so like cause it's the end of the school year for us. We got like a week or two left. Cool. So, in the summer, we'll really train out the videos and it's like we can play almost every day. Cause we have so much free time. Mm -hmm. And yes. everyone's gonna be able to show up. There's some series where 
two people are coming, yeah. one yeah. one person will also play a game. There's another big rule change I think we forgot to say. After the World Series this season, like right now, pretty much anyone on every team is kind of a free agent because you can just sign them off the right. They can just leave their team and sign with another team just like that. There's no like contract or stuff. But after the World Series this year, we're going to make everyone a free agent pretty much, which they already are. And then now managers can sign players to year deals like – Sign a player a four year deal, one year deal, season. three year season. Yeah, like season. Four season deal. Yeah. So, like, that player, if they're in the middle of their contract or whatever, they, they cannot be, they cannot just leave the team. Mm -hmm. You can still cut them, but they can't just leave the team and sign with another team. Yeah. So, you can lock up players for, so it's a lot more organized in that will, department. Will the six well. be the, will it still be the six, uh, six. person I think, it's, I think it's six person. Roster limit, and then you can have one reserve. One reserve, someone gets hurt. So you can really have seven players on your team. Yeah, yeah. so like, Slingers, we have uh, one reserve, Parker Greenhaw. You saw him last series because everyone else couldn't count him. It's just me and Carter, and then Parker could, could be there. So there could there could be some free agent signings, like off different teams, maybe a couple. But I think most players are going to sign back to their original team. Yeah. And A really prime like example team. of that rule is Max Perkins. Mm -hmm. He went... To about every single team, and he would just leave his team. Yeah, like he was on the, my slingers for a little while. He was one of our good players. Me, Carter, and Max are kind of pretty trick, like pretty good trio. And then all of a sudden, he just like left for the sluggers because uh, they just won the World Series, so he wanted to like get on the bandwagon, I, I guess. Know, right. And he just yeah. left. Well, I didn't like really know until he told me. Like, but it was after he was already on the team, and I was just mad about that because he was a good player. So like after, so like, after every season, there will be a, there will be a amount of players that are. New free agents, so it'll just be like, just like they can either sign back with their team or other teams can go and try to shop on free agents and pick up another player. Another, another example is the trade between the Bombers and the new Dodos. Mm -hmm. The Dodos really just stole Jesse and Eli from us and just gave us. Yeah, that trade was pretty much players. forced upon, yeah. but so. it ended up being. Good. We have a pretty fair deal, I would yeah, say. Yeah, it was a pretty fair deal. Yeah, but at the time, it looked like the Dodos were getting, was just ripping off the and, bombers. But, yeah, because you yeah. see Jesse, he was like really solid pitcher. I mean, he still is pretty good. And then, like, Bo Hardy was unproven in the league, and Noah, Noah Handback, he was not unproven. He still never showed up. Yeah, he never showed he up. He has I mean, never showed up. He's been kids now. I mean, Eli's, Eli, he's, not the, Eli's not the best player, but he's been playing for a long time. He has a lot of experience. I mean, he'll get those, you know, a lot of walks, some, like, base hits. He needs it, and then I mean Jesse's a solid, a really solid hitter this year. Especially he emerged at the hitting this. Yeah, he did. And then pitching, I mean he's a solid pitcher. I mean he's good. He is good. Kind of shows the league's evolving, like yeah, you yeah. kind of have to take risks. And there's a lot of people that are trying to get in. Yeah, we've got like, a lot of people asking us, how can I get in the league? I want to be in the league. Can I make a team? Like we have a lot of like free agents just like waiting to like be in the league. But so I just want to clarify. So like the if uh, like. Carter left. You didn't. Really, you don't have to resign him. I'm not saying you wouldn't. Do yeah. That. So like, after Car, if he after his Carter's year deal or whatever, say sign him to a four season deal. After that fourth season, Carter can. I mean, Edward can just choose to sign Carter back, which I'm sure he would. But he doesn't have to. But he didn't have to if okay. he didn't want to. He yeah, I can just let him, let him lock him free agency. Really and then I'm sure someone will sign him. He's a good player. Yeah. But, but that's not gonna happen. Um, and each team will have a manager. There's a few teams that. Really need to decide who's the manager because they're kind of fighting for it a little bit. Right? Yeah, so like, manager of the Mellons is William, and then me and Carter are kind of co manager of the Slingers. But, like, for, like, officially, it is that way. Yeah, it becomes that They work like, together, but, like, officially, when they're when the, he needs to sign players and stuff, it'll be Edward doing it. Yeah, but Carter, like, is, like, right on the side when I'm signing. Like, on the paper, so, it's, yeah. Yeah, on paper, it's me, but, like, really, it's me and Carter. And Luke Freeman is the Sluggers. I'm the Bombers. The Dodos. I think it's Shepard. Sam Sweat. And the Hogs is. Uh, uh, undecided. Undecided. That's the, undecided. That's the big question. Hogs are kind of. They kind of all like. Up around. in the air, yeah. Yeah, they're kind of a up in the air team in general. All right, as you can see, we got a brand new and improved trophy. So this is the old trophy. I mean, pretty small. You can see it like held up in my hand. I mean, it's a solid trophy for like the first year of the league. I mean, it's got the flag. It's kind of resembles the MLB trophy. But this one is like ten times better, way bigger. As whole you can see, whole another level. Yeah, whole. It's made out of wood, very sturdy. Like you can pick it up by the little poles. 
I mean, the flags are like the same, but like, we're gonna put, we're just not done yet. We're gonna put like a wiffle ball in the middle, like this one kind of. But it's, it's gonna look great. And this is gonna be the trophy from years to come. Cause yep. Yep. every team wants this right here. Yeah, this is the prize possession of NAWL. Spray painted gold and everything, it's nice. All right guys, thanks for watching our um, podcast video. Comment down below what you um, want us to do next, talk about next. And also comment who you think will win the World Series this year.